Midnight is a time when most of the kids are fast asleep, except of course the Midnight Gang who are going on epic adventures every single night and having so much fun instead of sleeping. Also, at the end of this video, I will be doing the uh, I will be picking the lucky winner of the book giveaway and stay tuned cuz you don't want to miss that. Welcome back to NP Station. Like I said, I will be reviewing the book The Midnight Gang uh, written by David Williams and also illustrated by Tony Ross. And a big shout out to Tony Ross for creating such amazing illustrations on each page and they were so funny. And I really felt like I was part of the Midnight Gang too. That's how involved I was in this story. And hey, Mr. David Williams is there an actual midnight gang in London? If there isn't, maybe you should think of creating one. And maybe include me too, because I would love to go on amazing adventures with the kids in this story. So getting back to this book, the main character is Tom. And it first starts off where Tom gets hit in the head with a cricket ball. And the ball's force is so hard that Tom goes unconscious. So he gets rushed to the hospital and there there's this weird and ugly looking um, man and he is the porter. So he takes Tom to this room and there the doctor comes and asks some questions, what happened? and you know just gets a normal checkup for his head and he has a huge bump on his head now from the ball so after his checkup for his head the porter takes um, Tom and admits him to the children's ward and in the children's ward there are four kids and their names are George Amber Sally and Robin and the boss of this and the head of this children's ward is Mrs. Matron. And she is the kid's worst enemy. She is so strict. Like, sometimes she says, you can't move when you're sleeping. That's impossible. So when um, the porter takes Tom to his bed, and the bed is so stiff, he, Tom's very, like, confused and surprised and how the other kids are sleeping on the stiff beds. So Mrs. Matron comes to Tom and asks him what happened and some she does stuff really rude such as she starts teasing Tom saying you got hit in the head with the ball. That's so rude. I mean he has a huge bump on his head now. So Miss Matron um, says to Tom well do you have any pajamas because you're not allowed to sleep in cricket in a cricket uniform and Tom's like no it's fine I don't need any that my cricket uniform is you know comfortable she's like no you have to have the per um the good perfect clothes to sleep in the hospital um so she goes inside this um room and Tom's actually very confused because all the other kids are saying that she's really rude but then um now, Mrs. Matron is giving Tom a pair of pajamas. So that's pretty nice. But when Mrs. Matron comes back from the room, she's hiding the pajamas behind her back. And she says, oh my God, Tom, I'm so sorry. I couldn't find anything for your size. But I did find a bunch of wonderful looking gowns that turned out to be your size. And I was thinking that maybe there were pajamas Tom's size. She just wanted to humiliate Tom. So she pulls out a pink frilly nightdress out from behind her back and says, but you can wear this. And Tom's like, Okay, no thanks, I love my cricket uniform, I'll just sleep with this. And she's like, no, you have to wear this pink, pink frilly nightdress. She forces him so much that she just push it, throws the nightdress to Tom and closes the curtain which is surrounding Tom's bed. And she says, get changed to Tom. 
So it turns out that Tom gets changed into this pink frilly nightdress. And when he opens the curtain, Miss Matron starts laughing so hard. And the kids do too, but they don't laugh out loud. They laugh in the inside or else they might get in trouble. So now Tom is so embarrassed that he might have to walk around the hospital in a, in a nightdress. And it's a girl's nightdress. So then they, he just goes with it and he lays in bed. After a few hours or so, Miss Matron says, lights out. It's, so it's nighttime for them, for the kids. Now they have to sleep. So she says um, to George, no eating chocolates, George. Your doctor has strictly told you because he has this illness going on in his stomach where he can't eat any junk food or chocolates. So she says no eating chocolates to George and says if anyone talks or moves when they're sleeping, they'll be in big trouble. So she flicks off the lights and goes into her office. And in her office, there's this um, lamp there and all the light is coming from her office. And also there's windows in the children's board. And this um, hospital is located in London and the clock tower is there and all the light is coming from the clock tower. And also people in London call the clock tower the Big Ben. So um, after a while, the clock tower starts chiming so then it's that's the sign that it's midnight so um something really crazy happens tom starts hearing some you know tin boxes like you know those tin boxes that come from the stores well the uh, he starts hearing the noises from the tin box and then following from the tin box there's some paper rustling and it's no ordinary paper it's candy wrappers. And Tom remembers what Mrs. Matron had told George. She said no eating chocolates. So Tom finds out that George is actually eating chocolates at night. So she, Tom asks George, like whisper shouts to him, hey, please, can I have one? I'm starving. And he's like, shh. He asks, Tom asks, can I have one two more times? And all he gets as a response is, but his last time he asks if George actually responds finally and he says be quiet Tom you're gonna get me in trouble and he might have said that too loud that the lights flicker on and it turns out that Miss Matron had heard George and she's like who was talking now admit it was it you George and George is like no he, it turns out that his mouth is full of chocolate. So Ms. Matron finds out that George is the one that was talking and also eating chocolate. So she, Ms. Matron takes a big, huge tin of chocolates from under um, George's bed and takes it into her, into her office and flicks off the lights. And then she keeps staring at the children, watching if anyone's going to move or talk. So then something really crazy happens. Miss Matron starts eating the chocolates. So she eats 10 of them. She's kind of getting really tired. And her favorite ones are the purple wrapped ones. So she eats 10 more of the purple ones and she kind of is getting really drowsy. She eats 10 more. Now she can't even open her eyes. Like her eyelids can't even stay open. She eats five more and she's out cold. She's just uh, out cold lying on her desk and a pool of drool is dripping down from her mouth. So um, George is like, yes, the plan worked. So now George and Robin, they actually get out of their beds. And Tom's like, guys, you're gonna get in trouble from Mrs. Matron again. So they don't even listen to Tom. They just go over to Amber's bed, which is another kid from the children's ward. And you know, like um, actually Amber broke both of her arms and both of her legs, so she can't walk. So George and Robin go up to her bed and help her get on the wheelchair. And um, there they help her get on the wheelchair and Tom's like, where are you guys going? I want to come with you. And they're like, no, be quiet, Tom. We don't want to get in trouble again. So they, you know what they do? It's really crazy. They rush 
to the exit of the children's ward. And Tom really wants to get out of this hospital and he wants some action. So he's like, well guys, wait up, I wanna come with you. And they, before he even finished the sentence, they're out. They, they're out of the children's ward and now he doesn't even know where they're going. So now Tom and Sally and Mrs. Matron are alone in the children's ward. So Tom really, like I said, wants some action. So he's really tempted to go follow George, Amber, and Robin, which is not a good idea because he might get in trouble, but he doesn't listen to his instinct. He just goes with it. He follows George, Amber, and Robin and goes out of the children's ward. And now Sally and Miss Matron are left alone. So now you won't believe what Tom finds out. Tom finds out that Amber, George, and Robin are part of the Midnight Gang. And guys, I said part. There's one more person that has joined this Midnight Gang, but I'm not going to reveal this in um, who that person is in this video. If you And you guys will probably never guess who it is unless you stay tuned to watch my part two video or get this amazing book. So now, guess what time it is? It's time for the giveaway. So to, yesterday was actually the last day to enter the giveaway to win the amazing book written by Debbie Machigo Florence and the title is The Flamingo Keeper. And um, today I've actually already picked the lucky winner and the winner is... Calamari Curls! Congratulations, you have won this amazing book and we will be contacting you on email or social media. So I can't wait for you to read this book and let me know what you think. So please enjoy your weekend and don't forget to subscribe, like, and also don't forget to share with your friends. Bye!